guys, this is Ozzy Griffin here. I'm be doing an open letter to Maddy uh, Bryce, and um, quite frankly, this is centered on her article, uh, Death of the Player. This article advocates all the things that, in my humble opinion, okay, I'm just kidding, in my not in any way humble opinion, have made the gaming community worse. I'm not exaggerating. Maddie Bryant, you're making the problem worse. So let me explain to you where I'm coming from as a gamer, as one of the people you're constantly railing against. Now I'm going to leave out any of your whining about privilege and entitlement. I have my privileges. Everybody does. I have things that I feel that I'm entitled to. I try and keep them in check. I am never above a healthy, honest discussion about them. Okay? Good. Now, you've got some latent anger issues by the sound of your writing. I get that. I dig that. I just don't honor it. Good. Now we've got that out of the way. So here's how it goes. Three games are going to disprove almost everything you wrote in that article. One, The Oregon Trail. This game is educational, it doesn't gloss things over, and it, shows, and it shows people that you can have different strategies. It also gives you a lot more agency in a certain context. The context that you've got a mission, you can't deviate from the mission, and you've got to find certain things to help you. It's interesting, it's fun, and it's engaging, and anyone can play it. Now, would it be just as interesting from a Native American's point of view? Actually, yeah, that would be fascinating. Could it be expanded out? Well, it has before. There's no reason to say it wouldn't. An Oregon Trail where you befriend or work with uh, some of the Native people? That'd be fascinating. However, certain contexts only allow certain sorts of interactions. However, this game is proof positive that you don't have to get rid of fun, which is something your article, to my opinion, seems to be advocating for, in order to make something educational. So, if you play uh, Oregon Trail as a role-playing game, which it is, consummately, mine, God and Himmel, you can have a lot of fun, especially if they bring out an addition we alternate between the Native American side uh, and the Settlers. Second game, Arcanum of Steamworks and Magica Obscura. Love that game. It looks into gender roles. It looks into, um, what do you call it? It looks into race relations, in this case, species relations. Uh, it looks into interspecies um, breeding and social attitudes. It has that beautiful Victorian esque setting uh, for a fantasy steampunk uh, world where it has. People being bluntly racist uh, to you uh, while also pretending to be upright citizens. Uh, it, has the, it has the refreshing uh, mechanic of a beauty score. Beauty is actually one of the um, stats you can actually put uh, points into. The more, the better looking one of your characters, the worse looking one of your characters is, regardless of what species they are, the worse they're treated by people. So... If you could incorporate something similar to that in your game every day, or whatever the Japanese title is, I've forgotten watch. Anyway, if you put in something like that where uh, the ability for you to look uh, as you desire actually leads to a more violent reaction uh, when people find out about your past, that, that would actually make for a really good game mechanic. It gives you agency and it also illustrates an all too common problem. Much like Oregon Trail, it's educational. And it gives you a sense of appreciation of what you have in your own life. And it doesn't take away anything from anyone. And it makes everyone feel better. One thing I noticed in your writing, if you really want to advocate taking away all agency, watch a movie. Go to a poetry slam. Oh, however, we're not done yet. We're going to the third game now. A game that brings everybody together anywhere on earth. It gets around the language barriers. It gets around the personal barriers. It even gets around physical disability. Chess. From its earliest original versions uh, in ancient Egypt, which is where it was dogs and jackals, they still buried people with these sets because it was such a fun game. 
very similar to Terry Pratchett's Thud, if you've ever played it. The game of chess is purely mental. It's all about the objective and seizing the objective. Every other piece is sacrificable. You've got to get that objective. That game shows people having fun and occasionally psyching people out. That's always fun. Um, together. It's one-on-one, -on -one, unless you want to play against a team of people who are suggesting moves. Because uh, they'll be like, Twitch plays chess. It would be a bunch of people having fun and able to play this game anywhere, anytime, any place you can find, even simulacrums of the pieces of, uh, or even set up the board uh, on virtual reality or in, on paper. That's all you need. And ask anyone who's played chess by mail. And that's what I've got to say to you. You don't make gaming better by pointing at people and saying, you're bad, you're bad, you shouldn't be playing games. You've got family, girlfriends and bosses for that. Thank you. What you do is you say, here's a game that everyone can play. Here's a game that every that allows you uh, to try and find a way around things and maybe it doesn't even let you win in the way that you want to highlight um, how things are bad. And that's something you seem to be quite good at. That's why I think you have the capacity to make better games. What I think you need is not to start railing against corporatism. Stop dreaming of a utopia where all the games are made by small indie developers and everyone forgives them for being, you know, low quality. It's okay to have a big studio and make a big budget game. It's okay. It's not going to eat you. What you need is a better world where problems will arise, yet you have everyone on board with sh some shared experiences and a sense of commonality. Not to say we're all the same, to say that we have similar things expressed at different levels in everybody. When we can do that, games will become even better than they are now, a constructive force for good. Something we can use to educate without patronizing, to confront without demonizing, and to enjoy without segregation uh, or anything that draws us apart. Fun. Something we can all enjoy. That's the trick. It's not easy. However, anyone who's ever played chess and had a, and had a coffee with an old friend over a game knows that it is well worth the effort. I'm Ozzy Griffin. I hope this has been educational to everyone. You have a good afternoon.